<laughs> oh, hi. Uh, I'm reading my old copy of Grimm's Fairy Tales again. It's like the second or third edition. You know, it's before Disney got hold of all the stories and whitewashed them. So if you want the kids to come in and sit around the computer and hear a really cool bedtime story, you really should know me better than that by now. Get the kids out of the room. Send them over to the next county, okay? Because tonight's story is Cinderella. Once upon a time, there was a man by the name of Maurice de la Marzipan. And he was blessed with two beautiful daughters named Emerud and Bluette. However, his wife had failed to give him any sons. However, on his 40th birthday, fate seemed to smile upon him because his wife was suddenly stricken ill and died. He was free to remarry, and he found a woman who was only 17 years of age and with good birthing hips, and he married her. He was even willing to overlook the fact that she already had a child of her own that she called Cinderella. Cinderella was a touched child. She had a bedroom, but she refused to sleep in her bedroom. She preferred instead to sleep in front of the fireplace every night. And she had the ability to talk with birds, mice, and rats, and get them to do her bidding. She also had an extra finger on each hand and a lazy eye. Her prospects were not good for marriage. Still, Maurice was confident that his new wife would bear him the son that he so desperately wanted. But it was not meant to be. There was a plague outbreak, and his new wife died, leaving him with two marriable daughters and then Cinderella. He was kind of stuck with her. Meanwhile, on the other side of the tracks, uh, yes, it was the 1600s and they had tracks back then. They weren't railroad tracks. I'm not sure what kind of tracks they were, but they were tracks. They were beautiful tracks. You never saw more beautiful tracks. On the other side of the tracks, there lived the royal family with the Prince Philippe. Like any patriot of the time, Philippe was involved in the sieges of Flanders in 1676 and 1677. Philippe, however, was not an ideal soldier. While most soldiers like to impale men with their swords, Philippe liked to impale men with his... Never mind. We're just gonna move on. After Philippe's dishonorable discharge, no pun intended, the king became worried. Rumors began circulating all over Europe about the future king of France, and it looked unlikely that he would actually be able to marry one of his cousins. So a royal marriage seemed very unlikely for Prince Philip. So the king decided, hmm, how can we cover this up? I've got it. We will throw a ball, and Philippe will pick a bride at this ball. He will marry a commoner. This was the only reason a royal would have married a commoner back then. None of Philippe's cousins would have touched him with a ten-foot pole. Well, there was Prince Vladimir of Moldavia, but um, they were both Nelly Potoms. So, yeah, that wasn't going to happen. Okay, so, moving on. Cinderella wanted to go to the ball. But her stepfather said, no, you are going to stay home and you're going to clean out the chicken coop. And so he and his daughters went to the ball because Maurice was thrilled at the prospect of one of his daughters possibly marrying the future king of France. Cinderella went into the chicken coop. Uh, yes, you see, back then, if you were French, but not a royal, you raised chickens. It's just the way it was back then. Basically, chickens were like the new iPhone. You had to have one. Or in that case, you had to have like 20. So Cinderella cut the head off one of the chickens, wiped the blood all over the living room wall, lit some candles, and pledged her immortal soul to Satan, a witch then appeared before her. She transformed Cinderella's rags into a beautiful ball gown, gave her beautiful golden slippers, and turned a pumpkin into a coach. She also gave Cinderella a magical necklace that would make the prince 
fall madly in love with her. Yes, the witch was a true miracle worker. Cinderella went to the ball. And uh, she was having a good time, but she heard rumors, whispers, that the prince was a sodomite. She confronted the prince about these rumors, and he swore up and down that he wasn't. And he took her to a secluded part of the palace where he was going to prove he wasn't a sodomite. As he began to undress, Cinderella suddenly noticed that she was receiving a visit from her monthly friend. Needless to say, she didn't want the prince to see this. So she quickly ran out of the palace and unfortunately she left one of her slippers on the stairs. Now again, the prince being a sodomite, all women looked the same to him, so he really couldn't remember what she looked like. So he had to go on this huge uh, crusade across the land, having women try on the slipper. And whose ever foot fit the slipper would be his wife and the future queen of France. As we all know, he eventually got to Cinderella's house and the slipper, of course, fit like a glove. She wore it on her hand? Anyway, the uh, prince was overjoyed to have found his future queen. See, I could have sworn he found his uh, queen back during the sieges of Flanders, but uh, okay, whatever. So he was thrilled that he found his future queen. At this moment, Cinderella called her bird friends down from the trees and commanded them to peck Bluette and Emerald to death. And the birds, being Cinderella's familiars, did as she commanded. Obviously, the prince was a little freaked out that his future bride was a Satanist, but he had quite a few secrets of his own that he was trying to keep, so he was willing to overlook it and marry her anyway. Cinderella's next action was the execution of her stepfather. He was drawn and quartered, and she watched the whole thing with merriment. Her stepfather's testicles were cut off and stuffed in his mouth, and he was buried in an unmarked grave. Philippe's father died a couple months later, and his son and new daughter-in-law became the king and queen of France. Their marriage was a happy one for about 10 years, but then Cinderella, ironically, had failed to give her king a male heir. Realizing that he had married somebody who was freakish, talked to animals, had a lazy eye and extra fingers, the king promptly charged her with the crime of witchcraft, of having bewitched him and seduced him. Cinderella was found guilty and she was burned at the stake. The king then married one of her ladies-in-waiting, who was able to give him a male heir, and everybody lived happily ever after the end.